to Fido, your only source for bad, bad dog, go lie down. This is Fido Live number 109. Uh, we are still without the chief colorist. Uh, she might be coming home within the next couple of weeks. I was able to assist a little bit in her recovery yesterday. Um, all right, let's see what the cartoonist hath wrought. Here is the Monday strip. We have Fido and Felicia. And Felicia is reading Walden, Henry David Thoreau. Uh, I remember this book from school. It was very boring. <laughs> but um, one of Thoreau's statements is, um, most men live lives of quiet desperation. That's probably about as uh, arrogant as, uh, as Thoreau ever got. So, the cat, the, the, the life of a cat is beset with constant desperation. We care about everything, but must put forth the appearance of complete indifference. I've never seen you care about anything. Yeah, I'm good at it. All right, there's the Monday one. Actually, we can just decide because we don't need to do any more work on that. That's ready for filming. If the chief colorist is here, she could color it. Here is Tuesday. We can we again have Felicia, Fido, and Bo. And Fido says, <clears throat> there are over 50 million dogs in the United States. It's only a matter of time till we organize and do something about the cats. She picks up a ball on the floor and throws it. Fetch. Fido comes back with the ball in his mouth. I'm not worried about it. All right. Here is Tuesday. Here is Wednesday. Um, Fido and Felicia sit on the couch. What's that? Cat treats. They're called kitty yummies. I'll trade you for a doggy fun snack. Ugh, this thing is dead. What's the fun in that? Whereby she has, he, Fido has just pulled a live mouse out of Felicia's treats. Yeah. I probably should have printed up the Peanuts comic strip. This is um, this, that inspired Fido. But um, does anyone remember when Lucy used to hold the football for Charlie Brown to kick and she'd pull it away in the last moment and Charlie Brown would go flying? I never understood it as a kid, but I guess it was supposed to be funny. <laughs> so Fido holds the beer bottle. Dino chases after it. Fido pulls it away at the last second. I got the idea from a comic strip. So it's Thursday. And Friday, where are they usually on Friday? Yeah, you're right, they're in the bar. Now this one, I haven't done any of the, this is just a uh, rough pencil, you can barely, I'm looking at the computer here, you can barely see it. Phone can see it a little bit better, but. Uh, we have Felicia, Dino, and Fido. And Fido says, sometimes I think my brain holds great powers waiting to be discovered. I can make this glass move by pure mind power. And next panel, Felicia flicks the glass off the bar and falls onto the floor. See? They work as a team. So we could be doing the rough pencil, the, the finished penciling on this. I don't know. I wasn't planning on it, actually. Here is the Saturday. We have Felicia, Bo, and Fido. They, they jump on him just as he comes in the door. Felicia says, I need my own phone. Why? Fido has one. Fido says, because they might need to find me. Well, well, they might need to find me too. And as they're rolling on the floor laughing, it could happen. And here's the one we're probably going to start with today. I have no idea when it's going to go in, but there are no words or anything. Um, and you'll be able to see this better as I do the finished penciling today. But Fido's sitting in his bathtub, and he comes up with an idea of floating in an inner tube with a nice cold drink in the bathtub. Third panel, we see Bo's truck with a tire missing. All the lug nuts are on the ground with the tire iron. It's up on a concrete block. And in the fourth panel, the complete truck tire has been stuffed into the overflowing bathtub. And Fido's trying to lay on top of it uncomfortably. He's already dropped his drink, which is spilled on the floor. So, um, difference between dreams and reality. So that's the one we're going to be drawing today. Um, uh, let's see, how do we start here? Oh yes, cartoonists, as you all know, cartoonists are the dirtiest, filthiest creatures on the face of the planet, so I need this, a glove, to 
keep my filth off the otherwise clean paper. If you look closely, you can see I already have some dirt on the paper. You too, that camera. I already have some dirt on the paper. <laughs> uh, I dropped my pencil. All right, and uh, we're gonna move the camera in closer for the folks at home on quick time. And hopefully they'll be yeah, they could be able to see that. As for you on the backup iPhone, I can't move that camera. So that's the picture you get. If uh, the QuickTime doesn't work again, we've lost three or four of these recordings. All right, that's why I've started backing it up. Then everybody will be seeing it from uh, the QuickTime camera. All right, as you know, I like to put down a piece of paper to keep me from smudging the... Um, the lines here, and uh, yeah, need a sharper pencil. And I could just put down a blank piece of paper, but where's the fun in that? Well, I survived the great crash of August fifth, twenty twenty four. If you if you heard these, uh, if you saw the news on Monday, uh, where we had a three percent drop uh, in, 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 in stocks. Um, you could imagine that the media had their cameras poised on the windows of the buildings, waiting for people to jump. <laughs> oh, the sky is falling. It's the worst thing since the Depression. Oh, uh, next day, it's, it's fine. It's better and recovers. It's just a buying opportunity for everyone. So um, I'm glad everyone has, alongside me has survived the Great Recession of Monday. Uh, hey, poor Google. Federal judge rules that Google is a search engine monopoly, violating the Sherman Act. 60 million in penalties. Google controls 90% of inquiries and is paid to keep it that way. Um, so they make $240 billion in revenue and a $60 million penalty. That's, yeah, whatever. But um, I notice whenever I try to search things, I'm thrown to Bing. I actually have to um, consciously ask them to give me Google because you know, Bing sucks. <laughs> so I must be in that 10% who just doesn't get Google <laughs> unless I ask for it. Well, I can't. I can't even pull in the password here. Uh, but yeah, uh, was it a Bing search that I can use here? Hmm. I was planning on talking about the grabby brush. It, it uh, it appeared on my oops it appeared on my YouTube as a commercial and I gotta tell you <laughs> as a guy who uses brushes a lot I just can look at these things and tell you this shit <laughs> let's see if we can <laughs> okay first things first <laughs> they got this really freaky square edge which will encourage you just to hold the brush in that way. It's like um, the, 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 those guards used to put on kindergartners' pencils. Now, when you're drawing with a brush, oftentimes the the hairs will split as you're drawing as you're drafting. So you want to spin the brush counterclockwise, and the the wetness of the ink will bring back your point. With with that handle alone, it discourages you from spinning the brush when you need to. Secondly, let's look at the let's look at the damn brushes themselves. <laughs> is that a point? That has got to be right. That, that right there. It's 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 purposely rounded. I think they actually got a bit a bit of sandpaper and and and, and like this destroyed it. You you want a brush that can give you a really fine point, and then you, when you bear down, it gives you a thick line. This. It, it, and I can tell you, that is not Himalayan tree squirrel pubic hair. Uh, oh, we got even closer here. <laughs> that that looks like who sable? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh. These are the cheap, cheapest crappy. Uh, oh, let's wash it in action. Look how it's already losing. It's it's lost its <laughs> it's lost its integrity. Their hair is already popping out. Just pushing it into into paint here. Uh, yeah, the, the brush is just... 
and you call this? Look at the whole, oh, look at how haggard the, 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 the lines are. The, the bristles are just dancing around, <laughs> making a mess. This is, this is the shittiest brush I have seen in my life. <laughs> this is an example of the good work you can do with this brush. <laughs> And I hope it cleans in water. Yeah. <laughs> Look at how oh. <laughs> it doesn't want to hold its point. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I swear sometimes that the evil Google Corporation is like listening to me, which is why I talk a lot about brushes on this program. And they gave me an ad for brushes. This gave me an ad for probably the shittiest brush on the planet. <laughs> so grabby, no thanks. <laughs> it's not even a crafter's brush. Uh, well, hey, what would a day be without beating up on Disney? It's the oldest sheet of paper I have in the in the stack of stuff. Uh, what's wrong with Disney? Three items. They have a brain drain, their audience loss, and Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Now they're... Um, <laughs> that, this is from That Park Place, Jonas Campbell and Bash Sky. I just I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to visually represent what the hell Disney's doing with, with their uh, streaming service now. And, well, just printing up the uh, thumbnail from... Uh, that park place is all I needed. They're starting a cable company for $43 a month <laughs> uh, with half the content. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Disney supposed to be profitable this year? Uh, yeah. Well, no. Disney Plus will never be profitable, as we said. And uh, hey, while we're at it, we all love Gina Carano. But don't take her word for it when she says that Elon Musk is going to uh, take over on Disney. It's nearly financially impossible to take over Disney. It's owned by too many people, and most of the people who own it are these retirement uh, uh, funds. And what are you going to do? Uh, tr tr try to convince the retirement funds to, to, to sell their Disney stock to you? It, it ain't going to happen. So... Uh, Elon, go occupy Mars, but you're not going to be occupying the uh, Bob Iger's shower. <laughs> Nelson Peltz already told you. Let it fall. <laughs> so, well, we're on the topic. Um, Chris Gore was reporting that Kathleen Kennedy wants to go out on a high note. She's looking to retire, but she wants to have a success before she goes. So what we got to do is the next piece of shit she puts out there, we got to say, oh, brava, Kennedy. Yes, that's a masterpiece. It's, it's the only way we can get rid of her. <laughs> if only Indiana Jones was successful, we would have gotten rid of her already. <laughs> but oh, well. Um, sticking on the topic of Disney, um... Tiana's Bayou Adventure is getting worse. They're going to need a fix of between 150 to maybe as high as $300 million, and we'll probably have to scrap all these new animatronics. Now, half of the reason why they, besides the Song of the South, half of the reason why they um, wanted to change out Tiana is because of the animatronics. Uh, one of these little companies down here that Disney owns actually makes robots. Uh, someone down here and they thought they had a new uh, fantastic robot thing but it can't survive Florida so anyway the total price tag on the uh, remake of Splash Mountain to Tiana's Bayou Adventure looks like it's going up to around one half of a billion dollars <clears throat> oh, drink them if you got them cheers so oh. We are not done yet. Oh, we're done with Disney. That's so, yeah. 
Let's get those ass, oh, those gentlemen, those lovely people, off the board. And we're going to pull in our girl, Jamie Lee Curtis. But rather than having to look at Jamie Lee as she is today, 70, let's bring her up as we remember her while we read this story. Jamie Lee Curtis asked crew to wear name tags. <laughs> I think I'm going to end it there. Anybody remember the episode of Seinfeld? <laughs> when uh, one of the characters had some influence with someone running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted all of New York City to wear name tags. <laughs> but um, this is to get rid of any hierarchy that exists among actors and them on the set. I want it to be equitable, says Miss Curtis. <clears throat> Jamie Lee Curtis revealed on Kevin Hart's book uh, that... I didn't know Kevin Hart had a serious. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> News here. Kevin Hart has a serious XM broadcast podcast. I, I didn't know that exists. It's probably funny. Kevin, Kevin's a pretty funny guy. Uh, yeah, but then you get to buy serious. You know, never mind. <laughs> so anyway, that she asked her film crews to wear name tags so that everybody remains equal on her film sets. That's mighty wide of her. How, how do name tags make people... Okay, no, I'll carry on. Um, the Oscar winner and current Emmy nominee for The Bear said that her aims to dispel the hierarchy that inherently exists on the sets between actors and the crew since everyone already knows the actors' names in most cases. <laughs> Jamie, 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 Jamie. I... I miss you. <laughs> uh, I would like all the little people to feel as if they are equal to us and represented. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to keep Jamie on the page here just so we can remember what we've lost to time. <laughs> You know, she, she was never a sparkling intellect, but she's always just a fun person. Uh, on The Fish Called Wanda, where she played like this reprehensible, horrible character, uh, John Cleese said that she was really a good friend on the set and taught him romance. <laughs> and anyone can do that for poor John Cleese. Uh, well, and... Uh, her character taught his character how to cheat on his wife and ruin his marriage, but <laughs> he taught her, he, she taught him romance. Uh, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. She wants it to be more equitable on the set. Well, hey, I got an idea. The actors can uh, share a uh, substantial part of their paycheck to everyone <laughs> of the little people. Guys like Keanu Reeves, they they buy. They, they he bought a bunch of watches for all the people on the set one time. He bought someone a car. Maybe, maybe I, for some reason, I see a Porsche seems to come to mind. Where he, like he spends a lot of the paycheck they give him <laughs> on the. On the little people who wear name tags. <laughs> little people who wear name tags probably don't want you to know who what their names are because you only know someone's name in working situations like that if they fucked up royally. <laughs> All right. See this Fido in his dreams. I got a dream balloon up here. He's thinking of himself in a inner tube, floating. I don't do uh, these silent, non-dialogue strips very often. Probably should do them more often.
and oh I probably should explain why I just do the character and not all the background and the finished pencil here because uh, <clears throat> I do <laughs> uh, so if we end up doing any brush work later on I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> maybe we'll pull back the grabby commercial to, to show the folks at Grabby what well a useful brush looks like <laughs> and these are not even like the best brushes in the world these are uh, the brushes I use are garbage <laughs> I know I uh, I know I brag about them being uh, made from the finest imported squirrel pubic hair uh, so expensive because we have to send the Sherpa up the mountain <laughs> But even the crap brushes I use are far superior to those grabbies. It, 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 it's sort of a situation of like not even for free. I, I couldn't find a use for a grabby brush. Uh, thank you, but no thanks. I guess maybe if I was painting models, model airplanes, model cars. But even that, I, 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 well, if you just if you're just splashing on paint, I guess that uh, horrible handle might be fine. I think if you have nerve damage and like you can't hold a pencil, <laughs> maybe the grabby brush will be good for you. Uh, no. But this is just me you know, thinking off the top of my head. Uh, <laughs> situations where you could use that product. So no, I don't plan on having a sponsorship <laughs> from Grabby Brushes anytime soon. So I did a little, uh, I had to actually um, reference what a uh, truck looks like with its tire removed. So we got the brake, um, the brake liners and, the, and, the, and, 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 and that, that, that's the coil spring from the, uh, that's, that's the uh, strut, it's part of the engine under here. I actually, you know, tried to, tried to make it look like it would really look like. And finally. We have our boy Fido laying uncomfortably on top of the tire. Now I had to think this thing through a couple times. Uh, the original illustration, original plan. Drag out the book here. Where are we? That's closer to the front than I thought. Yeah. I definitely wanted Fido to be sitting as if he's uncomfortable and his back is hurting while on top of this. But he's down behind the tire more. And uh, what I have here. And I'm thinking now that my original plan might actually be funnier because he's slipping off the back. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I changed my mind multiple times. In my original drawing, I had him, I had the body slipping off the back of the, uh, of the tire. But he's on able. And that makes his hand look like he's trying to save himself. Yeah, yeah, that works better. Also, one of his legs is in front of the wheel. Come with us, Jamie. We gotta redesign this. Let's get a erasable pencil so one of his knees was still in front of the wheel let's put the other hand up here, so it looks like he's trying to save himself. Uh, 
All right, let's see how that looks. What do you think, Jamie? Looks great. Okay, thank you. And I need a point on this. So this is from the film Trading Places. In case you're interesting, interested in actually seeing Jamie and all her courtesies. Funny film, Eddie Murphy, Dan Aykroyd. All right, now his ear is behind the shower curtain here, so I'm just going to draw the shower curtain a bit. And this hand should be like splayed out trying to grab something. This hand's wedged over the edge of the tire. Hand. Paw, not hand. So despite his best Late plans it doesn't quite work out. And we'll just draw the tire there. So that's what we're looking at. What do you think, Jamie? Baby got back. See, that's her back. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, let's reorganize the table here. So uh, I was, you may or may not remember, last week I was planning on doing this one, but decided against it. See, I only do what makes me happy, and well, that wasn't making me happy. Let's get Friday and Saturday up here. We'll uh, get the lettering out of the way. Maybe be able to show what a brush, how a brush should work. So uh, we're still using the uh, Speedball Super Black ink because, well, we left Noodler's Heart of Darkness far behind. Always look for Cthulhu as a sign of um, your quality in your ink. But so far the speedball at a third the price it seems to be working out pretty well. With my only complaint being the actual bottle that speedball stupidly comes in. It's a plastic bottle and when the ink gets around the threads of the plastic you're, it glues this cover. You're not getting this cover off without a, without a wrench. Where by glass bottles tend to work so much better. I had to transfer the ink into a useful bottle. Okay, how are we doing on? Uh, oh, we still seem to be recording. Well, that's good news. Let's uh, let's ink up this brush. Now I'm not sure which brush I am using here. And I just randomly pulled it out of the stack. It doesn't look like it has a very good point. Ooh, it's messy too. Man, look at that. That brush looks like that point doesn't look that point looks like a grabby. <laughs> Alright. Check out this brush. See how it's all all the we still have some uh, bits of the uh, hair sticking out. Huh? And I spin it with a little bit of moisture, and that is a that is a perfect brush. You you can get really fine points, yet still bear down and get a thick line. Do that there. Ooh, this ink is probably 
contaminated with a lot of smudged. That that's a um, that's a technical term, smudged. Ooh. Gonna take a while to get this brush. Uh, hey Jamie, do you mind if I if I use you for a while? I gotta get and figure out. Yeah, that seems to be and cleaning up. Yeah, it's a little bit better. <laughs> I think I'm gonna spend 20 minutes here just getting ink on the brush. <clears throat> now can I move in here without hitting the cameras? Not bad. I see if I uh, I can spin it, this brush it makes it it'll be very difficult to spin a grabby. So it looks like the uh, the blue party has picked uh, the vice presidential candidate. They were supposed to pick the guy from Philadelphia, from, from Pennsylvania, uh, Shapiro, but um, that particular party has a traditional death to America wing that would not have been happy with someone of his last name status <laughs> gently I can put it they're not fans of the chosen people and what's kind of funny is the chosen people will still vote for the blue party regardless of you know whether regardless of who they choose so doesn't matter so now um, that blue party will get the vote of Dear Bordenstein. <laughs> and the other side, the red party, has picked a gentleman who, a rumor has it, um, may uh, be a member of an alternative lifestyle. But he's still in the closet. He should come bravely out of that closet and announce it all and it'd be good for his political career. But I don't care because, well, they've done nothing about voter fraud. It's just going to be another contested election. And that is the end of such talk for Fight of the Comic Strip. We generally don't go political. <clears throat> but it's nice to see Jamie Lee Curtis again. Looking pretty good for 70 years old, isn't she? Oh, wait a minute, no. This is her at 70. Kind of looks like a reptile. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry, Miss Curtis. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Sometimes I think my brain holds great powers. And then the rest of the time is what I'm stuck with. Now, why did I hyphenate great powers? I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I do 
do seem to be having trouble with S's today. Can you see? I have to relearn how to do an S. I started with the sometimes. See how I bungled the S at the bottom? I bungled it again at the bottom here. And I bungled it again a third time. Barely had enough space to get the lettering, and I hate it when it gets that close to the, the gutter. Ugh. I think it's the uh, something to do with the camera setup here, because I'm afraid to move too close and to get into the normal angle that I work from. As I'll hit the camera. Hmm. Yeah, I got that S in, right? Maybe I just need to get into my groove, huh? <clears throat> Come with us, Miss Curtis. You know, rather than uh, doing the inking, see, I, I just wanted to uh, <clears throat> do a brush demonstration. Probably should have got it in there with the pencil and um, did the finished penciling, so you can actually, so people can actually see what's going on here. Oh well. <clears throat> The uh, QuickTime people, YouTube, and um, uh, probably won't get to see it, but everyone on the Apple phone, members of YouTube, probably get to see the after show where I do the penciling. Now, this brush is suddenly shaped up and start to fly right. Not nearly a perfect S. It started right around the M for make. See how can is a little bit like rocky. Yeah, it takes a little while for the for the brush to warm up. <laughs> but certainly this is a performance you would never see in a grabby. No, I don't even like the name of that brush, Grabby. Particularly, you know, when I when I make my squirrel pubic hair jokes, uh, <laughs> Grabby just doesn't sound right. As far as brushes go, typically you do get what you pay for, and uh, a twenty-dollar brush oftentimes is much better than an eight-dollar one. Um, you know, how much do the, those grabbies cost? That's a that's a good question. I wonder what they're soaking people for. <laughs> Let's pull them back up. Sixteen dollars for eleven of them. Wow, that's dirt cheap. <laughs> After eleven of all different sizes. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, uh, great for beginners and professionals. No, no, no. It's great for beginners. Let's let's leave it there. The ultimate detail paintbrush. Uh. Yeah, yeah. That that that's it. You know, this is this is for crafters. This is this is for. Um, this is something you give your kids. It's not a professional tool. And uh, I'm only beating up on them because uh, I've been uh, 
harassed by their commercials on YouTube lately, which I'm sure is just Google trying to um, play their algorithm. This guy uses brushes. Well, we have a brush avatar, uh, uh, um, a brush uh, sponsor. Let's give it, let's give all those commercials to him. I literally have. I see that commercial about eight times a day. Fortunately, you can skip through them. Back in my day, you couldn't skip through a commercial. You had to watch the whole damn thing. And we used to walk t through the snow 20 miles to school, uphill. I once killed a bear at my loosened leaf binder. Actually, they say it in uh, Boston, loose leaf binder. Okay, let's put that aside. And I'm actually glad that I did this one first because this requires me to do some more expressive lettering in the end here. And it would be, uh, it's good that the brush is behaving better. Now I like it that they, uh, like kids, they attack the parents at the door when they come in with, I need, I want, give me. I need my own phone. Back in the old days, we'd say cell phone. I'm showing my age. See, um, it's quite a design challenge to get these half-size characters in the same frame with the taller characters. Uh, Bo would be like six feet tall. And, but I don't mind uh, that his head is often in the uh, in the clouds, as it were, and in, 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 in up with the balloon, up with the word balloons. And I oftentimes have the word balloons behind his head. Because when you um, shrink them down. He's only three quarters of the size of the page now. Head down to a quarter, and even less, a fifth. If I do. Apparently there's a uh, pet supply company somewhere that has Fido.com. <laughs> they beat me to it. So we're, of course, stuck with fightofthecomicstrip.com. Which I'm running these days. Uh, my wife used to run it, but since she's been away for the past couple of months, four months, I've had her take over. And I just toss everything up there. I, I, I completely blown the... Uh, you know, she used to have... a. 
like a layout style. Yeah. <laughs> That's all gone. Once I record everything, it all goes up at once. It's just, the only thing that, you know, I, every day I have to do the, the daily, which I try to, I get in around 8.30 at night. But we're hoping for the chief colors to come back soon. She doesn't watch these things because it, it hurts too much, she says. I'd rather think that she just doesn't want to waste her time. <laughs> but she'll never watch this, so she'll never hear that. <laughs> as long as you people don't tell her. <clears throat> yeah, I know the truth. It's all right. She doesn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, we have to come up with a title for this one. And uh, most of the time we've spent uh, with Miss Curtis and uh, talking about our least favorite brushes, the Grabbies. <laughs> Get out of here. So, <laughs> are we going to call this the Grabby episode? <laughs> G-R-A-B-I-E. <laughs> Showing pictures of Jamie Lee without her shirt on. <laughs> Will that get me in trouble? <laughs> you. Yeah, uh, get up big. There we go. My God, look at that horrible, look at that horrible tip. <sighs> it's, it's, yeah, that's got to be sable. And you're proud of this? <sighs> Grabby. So the grabby episode? <laughs> the cartoonist is not getting grabbies. <clears throat> I guess they're proud of their handle because you can grab it. Oh, I'm not endorsing the brush that I'm using right now as like the finest brush in the world. Uh, you might have noticed that I've never told you the actual manufacturer of this brush, but anyone in the f anyone who uses brushes can figure out what it is. Brushes are kind of uh, uh, very strange because it's nearly impossible to make a consistent product. And I, I've got to buy a package of five just to get one that's going to do its job. And I wear these things out. I can show you some of the older brushes I have over here. It, 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 they, they look like grabbies. <laughs> the way the tip has just been worn down. The hair, actually... The, the, um, where's the way? All right, we got to get um, Felicia here. Uh, it could happen, so a little bit quicker with the... Uh, 
and we don't mind if we get the splits because it adds a little bit of emotion to the letters. There we go. All right. Uh, everyone, don't forget when you're done using your ink to put the cap back on your bottle, your glass bottle. Actually, I think this is a Winsor Newton um, like uh, fountain pen uh, ink bottle that I've repurposed for my uses. How are we doing on time? Eh, we're almost up to an hour. Don't want to keep you folks here longer than an hour. Uh, Irving on camera one, could you pull out a little bit? There we go. That works out nice. We're going to call this episode, uh, there we go. Hope there's still enough ink on the, uh, on the old brush. Yep, there was. <laughs> I spent nearly an hour of my broadcast beating up on an art supply. <laughs> only, only because uh, I, I've had to see the commercial too many times. <laughs> and, 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 and I see new and worse things every time I see the commercial. <sighs> well, thank you for joining me for uh, Fido... Live number 109, Grabby. Hope to see you next week. And uh, everything will be great. <laughs> <laughs>